I'm Emily Guerin for Inside Energy, and this is Theodore Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota. Many visitors say they come for the solitude. It's to get away from people and things. Um, not so much. I don't want to see stuff that ruins nature. <laughs> but north of here, the Bakken oil boom is encroaching. There's traffic, flares, and noisy drilling equipment. There's some uh, uh, wells off on the side of the road. Those are okay. But when you come to a spot like this, and the whole point is to uh, view how awesome it is out here, then yeah, it would, it would take away from, from everything. The park works with oil companies to move infrastructure further away, but they can't get rid of it completely. Well, I think it's starting to affect the visitor experience more and more. When people look out over a beautiful vista like this, they don't realize that a lot of what they're looking at is outside the park, either private land or forest service land. And so when they see oil development, industrial development, it certainly impacts their park experience. Many parks around the United States are threatened with development pressure. But Theodore Roosevelt's small size and odd shape makes it vulnerable. Because the 70,000 acres of the park is split into three separate units, it's somewhat harder to manage than it would be if it were a larger park or a park all in one piece because there are so many different angles uh, for development. Due to the efforts of people like Valerie Naylor, Theodore Roosevelt National Park still feels pristine. But it's an ongoing challenge in the midst of one of the country's fastest growing oil booms. For Inside Energy, I'm Emily Guerin.